Okay, today I'm going to talk about how to describe a numerical univariate graph. So, uh, how we describe data, we use a certain acronym called SOPS. So, first S stands for spread, O stands for outliers or gaps or clusters, C stands for center, last S stands for shape. So, what about the spread? The spread discusses how wide the data is and it refers to the variability of the data. And how you def, uh, talk about the spread is by stating either the range, the standard deviation, or the IQR, uh, Q3 minus Q1. Uh, next, O, oh, outliers, is outliers, gaps, or unusual occurrences. So outliers say possible outliers unless the outlier test is definitively uh, completed. So you can also mention any gaps. And we have a picture down here of what a gap is, anything missing. You can also describe clusters, okay, where most of the data is. Cluster from three inches to seven inches and anything else unusual. Next, we can define the center. So this center discusses where the middle of the data falls. Three types of central tendency to describe center. That would be either the mean, the average, or the median, the middle number. And mode, um, mode we only use in describing categorical data. So if you're describing a bar graph or a pie chart, um, you mention what occurs most or least often, which is um, most often, which is the mode. Um, but for numerical data, typically center, we're going to describe either the median, the middle number, or the mean, the average. Lastly, you're going to describe the shape. Okay, so this refers to the overall shape of the distribution. And it could be symmetrical, uh, could be like a bell curve, approximately normal, uh, could be uniform, all about the same height, uh, right skewed, left skewed, or we have two different distributions going on. Um, so it could be bimodal. Lastly, make sure to label things in context. You must write your answer in reference to the specifics in the problem using correct statistical vocabulary and using complete sentences. Okay, so always relate it to the object you are talking about. So uh, compare the distributions of exam scores in these three classes, A, B, and C. Uh, so anytime it says compare or describe, uh, compare means that you need the keywords greater than, less than. And we need uh, at least four sentences, one sentence describing each part of SOPS. So first, um, we could describe spread. The class scores have approximately equal spread, ranging from 35 to 38. Class C has possible outlier at 42. Class B has possible outlier at 90. Again, unless you've definitively done the outlier test, use that adjective possible. To describe center, class A has the greatest center around 82, with class C having the lowest center around 61. So again, make sure with compare that you're using keywords greater or less than. And shape, all classes are approximately symmetrical. None are clearly skewed right away. Uh, so what about uh, these distributions and classes D, E, and F? So again, at least four sentences, one sentence describing each part of SOCKS. So class F has the largest range of scores of about 60. Class D has the smallest range of scores of about 17. Outliers or gaps, class F has the most possible outliers with class D having the least number of possible outliers. Uh, sentence for center, all classes have approximately equal centers, around 71. And last sentence, all classes are approximately symmetrical. Uh, so next we look at the cumulative relative frequency plot, uh, sometimes also called the OGIV. So it is used to answer questions about percentiles. So notice you're always going to have uh, percentiles on that y-axis. Percentiles are the percent of individuals that are at or below a certain value. 
Quartiles are located every 25% of the data. So the first quartile is the 25th, while the third quartile is the 75th. And a special name for Q2 is the median. Uh, so let's use this relative frequency uh, graph in order to solve uh, some questions. Uh, so the first one says half of golfers are over the age of what? Well, half as a decimal is 0.5. So we can come over here on the y-axis, find where 0.5 is, draw a horizontal line um, to the graph. And we should see about the age of uh, 57. Again, if you're not sure, add the adjective about. Uh, let's look at the second one. Golfers at the 75th percentile are at least what age? So golfers at the 75th, again, find 0.75 on the graph, go horizontally, or on the left, on the y-axis, go horizontally to find a point on the graph. And you should have it at about 65. Again, that one's a little harder to estimate, um, but add the word about. Lastly, what percent of golfers are between ages 59 and 79? So again, age is on the x-axis, so go up to 59. We're on 79. So that should be about one minus uh, 0.6, so about 40%. Uh, so next, let's define IQR. Again, IQR stands for the interquartile range, and it is the range of the middle 50% of the data. I think about on a box plot, K, okay, your IQR is actually the middle box, the middle 50%. And it is found by taking Q3 minus Q1. First quartile Q1 is the median of the observation that are to the left of the median in the ordered list, or we could say on a box plot, the start of the box. Q3 is the median of observations to the right of the overall median, i.e. the end of the box on a box plot. Identifying outliers, uh, the IQR is used to identify outliers. And we have what's called the outlier rule. Outlier rule states 1.5 times the IQR. If a value is above that on the high end or below that value on the low end, um, it is a definitive outlier. So we call an observation outlier if it falls more than 1.5 times the IQR above the third quartile, or if it falls 1.5 times the IQR below the first quartile. So you take Q1, you subtract 1.5 times the IQR. If a number is lower than that, it's a low outlier. Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, and the high end is a high outlier. Uh, so uh, calc steps, IQR can easily be found uh, by making a box plot. So here I've listed uh, using the TI calculators um, how to do that. You're gonna go into your list and spreadsheets.
Okay, uh, to find the IQR, I'm using the calculator. Okay, uh, so using that, let's see if we can find any outliers. So again, if you do this um, on the calculator, you can actually just make a box plot and a box plot will definitively uh, make a dot showing the outlier. So I think that's the easiest route but to go if you have a calculator. Um, but if we're finding outliers by hand, we're first gonna find the IQR, okay, which is Q3 minus Q1. So order your data left, left to right. Find the median of the lower half, median of the upper half, uh, subtract, you should get 8.5. Next, you're gonna multiply that value times 1.5 to get 12.75. Then we're gonna take Q3 and add 12.75, so Q3 was 17, plus 12.75 is 29.75. Q1 minus 12.75 is 8.5 minus 12.75. So that equals negative 4.25. So let's see, do we have any numbers above 29.75? No, we do not. So we have no upper uh, outliers. Notice, do we have any negative numbers? No, so we don't have any lower, so we have no outliers there. So what if 31 was added, okay? If 31 was added, we can't just say, oh, 31 is above this one. Oh, yes, we have an outlier. You need to create a whole new IQR because we've added an upper value. Okay, so you'd have to add 31, have to again find IQR, um, again, or make a box plot on your graphing calculator, and the box plot will definitively uh, put it as a point outside the whisker, um, denoting a, denoting an outlier. Okay, and that is describing data.